Sticker cubes versus stickerless cubes. What's the difference and which one should you get? Okay, well, this one isn't completely stickerless. There we go. I wanna get one thing cleared right away. Both types of cubes are legal in WCA competitions. Even though there are loads of videos now that use stickerless cubes, including competition videos, there is still a common enough misconception that stickerless cubes are not legal. Plus, hasn't everyone seen the world record videos? Oh wait, that's stickered. That's stickered. You can't even see the cube in this one. Okay, fine. I can see why people might think stickerless cubes are not allowed. If you search online now, you will actually get mixed results on whether or not it is legal. And that is because they used to not be legal in competitions until that rule got changed. I wish there was something we could do about this, but I guess the legality change was too recent for Google to really notice. The reason that stickerless cubes were not allowed in the past is because they give an unfair advantage. When you turn 45 degrees, you can see two different colors here, which is not actually on the face of the cube. And that lets you see things like this, which you should not be able to see from this angle if you were using a stickered cube. And also, because the colors go to the edge of the piece instead of stopping near the edge, then you can also get things like this. You can see what color is over here without even looking at that side. Despite these unfair advantages, the rule was changed to make stickerless cubes allowed in competitions. The reason being that, practically speaking, it would be very difficult for any of this to actually become an advantage. For example, it's a common bad habit during F2L to look at the back to see what pieces are there instead of using some other technique like deducing what's at the back. With a stickerless cube, in theory, you would never have to look there just because if you wanted to know what an edge was, you could just do this. There it is. And if you wanted to know what a corner was, you could do this and see one more of its colors. However, it's very impractical to use these in real solves. If you're gonna do this, you might as well do this. Or maybe since you're already doing U-turns during F2L, then you might as well look to the back during one of those. That can be done sometimes, but it is very difficult to see what's there with confidence during a U-turn. Now, is it possible to have a meaningful advantage because of this? Yes, possibly, and maybe people are already doing it, but in my opinion, it is probably not something you should think too much about. But keep in mind, I am biased in the way that I've learned. I started with a stickered cube and spent many years on this before moving to stickerless, so maybe I'm just not trying hard enough to take advantage of this because I'm not used to it. I don't know what the answer is, but if I had to guess, it's barely a difference. And a lot of cubes nowadays, like the Gantt 11M Pro, don't even have this because they are designed differently. So I don't think this is a big deal, but what I do think is a big deal is that there are no stickers, and that actually makes me better. A stickered cube looks really nice, but given enough time, it can start to look like this. This is my mini Owlong from a long time ago, and for some reason these are the only stickers left on it. This is pretty much as bad as I would let it get before I would try and replace the stickers, but some people let their cubes get even worse. Once the stickers begin to get damaged, I have have this thing in my brain that kind of prevents me from turning at my maximum speed, and that's just because I don't want them to get more damaged. And once they start to get damaged, some parts start to come up, it's easier to catch on them, and then you can damage it even more. So I actually start to restrain myself subconsciously, and I cannot stop myself from doing that. But on a stickerless cube, I will have no problem with that. I can turn any way I want with no fear of damaging the cube. So practically speaking, the stickers are just an extra component that can get in the way, can become damaged, need to be maintained, and it's just easier to have a stickerless cube. And especially on big cubes, if you ever have to redo the stickers, that would be such a big hassle as there are so many pieces. And because people feel this way, stickerless is more popular, and a lot of recent 3x3 releases have come in only stickerless. But that doesn't mean that stickered cubes are useless. If you prefer a different color scheme or different color shades, it's easier to change it. And speaking of what's legal for competitions, you can have your own custom color scheme. It doesn't have to be the official Rubik's Cube color scheme. Of course, as long as it makes sense, like you're not putting two identical colors on different sides. And for a lot of people, this may be required if you have some sort of color blindness that makes it very difficult to tell apart two colors on the normal color scheme. I personally don't have any color blindness, and if you don't, then maybe you should just go with stickerless cubes as it makes everything easier and is pretty much the same. However, with stickerless cubes being more popular and some cubes only being released in stickerless, I thought it might make sense to give you guys a good idea of what it feels like to be colorblind and look at a cube where you cannot change the color scheme. So everyone's colorblindness is a little bit different, but this one shows a kind of red-green colorblindness, and you can see that some of these colors are really hard to tell apart. So if you have any colorblindness that makes it difficult to tell some of these colors apart, then that's a good reason to get a stickered cube and use your own stickers on it. And I think for this reason, it's important that new releases do come in stickered as well. But Unfortunately, that's not always the case. 
Some people have also asked if there's any feel or performance difference between stickered and stickerless cubes. I've always thought the answer was no, but it's hard to separate what the outside of the cube feels like when you touch it versus how the cube performs. So I have a stickered Volk M and a stickerless Volk M, and I decided I'm gonna see if there is any difference. Now when I turn them, obviously I can tell there is a difference just from the way the outside feels, but... It does actually feel slightly different just because of that, and I don't know if these cubes actually feel different or I just think they're different because they feel different on my fingers. Remember, I'm trying to see if there's an actual difference in the way that they turn. I decided I don't want to take all the stickers off and destroy this, and plus there may be some residue left on that does make it feel different anyway, so I decided I'm just going to put on gloves. These are some golf gloves that belong to my mother, and they are the tightest fitting gloves that I had so it doesn't like get in the way of how I can turn. Aw, oh, that's beautiful. So with these gloves and these two, what should be identical cubes, besides the fact that they're stickered and stickerless, I decided to do an experiment to see if I can actually tell the difference. After a few correct guesses, I realized I can actually hear the difference between them, which is not what I'm going for because even if there's a difference in sound, if it doesn't feel different when I turn it, then that really doesn't matter. And I've gotten enough cubes that I know even two identical cubes, no matter they're stickered or stickerless, they can sound different, just because of very small differences in how they are set up, like the screw and the springs, or maybe even small differences in how they were manufactured. So I put in some earphones and started blasting music into my ears at probably louder than I should should have, and I tried it again. At this point, I started getting it wrong sometimes. Stickerless. I still got the answer correct more often than not, and it's just because on the stickerless cube, I realized that one of the sides is looser than the other sides, and what that meant was if I picked up the cube and happened to be turning that side, I would realize it. Stickerless but if I picked up any other side, then I wouldn't realize it, and then my guess would just be completely random. On most of the guesses, I actually had no clue. They felt exactly the same. Stickerless. Now, is this a perfect experiment? No. Ideally, I would get a new set of two cubes every single time so I can't just memorize differences between them, and I wouldn't be wearing gloves, they would just all have no stickers. And also, I'd have more cubes than just one model. But that requires too many cubes and too much time, and this video has to go out eventually, so I settled with this just because I figured by the end I couldn't even Stickerless. tell the difference between the two anymore. Now there is the factor of how a cube feels on the outside. You may prefer the feeling you get with stickers or with plastic, and it depends on each person. But for me, I find stickers and glossy plastic to be similar, while glossy and frosted plastic are actually quite different. This isn't even about stickers anymore, and more about surface material, which is a topic for another time. So my opinion is I like stickerless cubes more than stickered cubes, although I am fine if I had to use a stickered cube. I just think there's really no advantage to this, at least for me. There are good reasons to get a stickered cube, but in general, I think most people would prefer stickerless. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this new style of video where I just take a topic in cubing and dump out all the info I have in my brain on that topic. If there's another topic you want me to discuss, then you can leave that as your comment. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.